Okay, so I have not recorded in a while because I was in Montana for a week for a vacation, but I'm at my first steam boiler maintenance of the season. And here's our boiler. We got a crusty sight glass, so I would like to replace those if they if I could get them out. Um, and yeah, these move. Yep. We'll clean out the pigtail, we'll test the low water cutoff, and make sure this drains. It does. So I will fill the boiler to the fill line to make sure that our heat exchanger is not leaking. And uh, I'll check that from inside. Okay, filled up to the top and I'll let it sit like that and uh, make sure we don't get any water drips down in the combustion chamber. You can see our pilot's lit, which is a good thing. Uh, I'm gonna close these off, grab uh, nuts and washers and the gaskets and we can replace those and get rid of all this crusty corrosion. Okay, so... Here's our old one, and I'm cutting the new one. We'll line these up just a bit longer, like a quarter inch, maybe a little over a quarter inch. And I got the cutter in there, and this is secure. And we're gonna spin it to score it. I squeeze pretty hard. Some people say you're not supposed to uh, score it like multiple times, like, like exactly what I'm doing, but that's just what I do, so we'll see if it works. When I tap, hopefully it breaks. Oh yeah, that was perfect. Perfect cut. That was awesome. Wow, that's the first time I've gotten a cut that clean. There's like not even a... I, this is great. So this is probably what happened when they tried to cut it without a cutter. This is what happens when you cut it with a cutter. That is a really smooth, nice cut. I'm really happy. Okay, so I cleaned it up a bit. I cleaned the threads off. And you can see we slide right in there. And when we drop it down, it's still got glass on both sides. And it's not going to be short, so... I'll get these tightened up. I got the uh, washers and the, uh, I forget what this is called, and the nuts. And there we have a nice new side glass, so. Let's see, we are full to the top. Dirty water, but I didn't notice any leakage anywhere in there. Turn the light on, it's tough to see on camera without the burner tubes removed, but I'm not seeing any evidence of water or rusting on the tubes. And I can check for rusting at the exhaust as well. Dirty, but it doesn't look like it's rusting, so I can now drain out this excess water. Okay, so hopefully we'll get some of that dirty water, but I'll let this all drain out and drain it down completely empty. I'll turn it on and after I clean out the uh, combustion chamber. I'll turn it on while it's empty and it should not fire and the auto feeder should kick on and fill it. And it's still running clear. As she did say, their husband drained the, drains this every couple of months when he remembers, so it's better than nothing. But I just opened up this uh, pressure gauge, blew through to make sure that our pigtail was clear, which it is. Uh, make sure that this is a 15 PSI relief valve, which it is. So, well, they're showing nothing on the sight glass. And I'm gonna start, yeah, we're getting a little bit dirtier now, but pretty clean water. So I'll just let this go till it's empty. 
And if you look at this, you can see there's like a rust pattern. And there's a little bit of a cut on this uh, fitting. I bet they uh, replaced the closely spaced, uh, the close nipple on the Hartford loop or something. Because it's pretty random to have a cut there. And it looks like it was probably like a pinhole leak on the threads or something. Because I had that before. Uh, we're pretty, should be pretty much drained by now. Okay, so I gave the combustion chamber a vacuum and uh, cleaned all the burner tubes. Tried to clean up as much dust and debris out of here as possible. I uh, gave the boiler a wipe down. Can't get all the stains out, but at least what I could get out is clean. And we are still empty. I jumped out my TT, my RMIW coming from a thermostat, and we can turn it on. Uh oh. The water cutoff didn't prevent it from operating. Let's take a little bit of a look into that. Okay, so I just looked through it all the wiring and everything looked like it made sense to me. I turned it back on, you can see it's on, and it just took a second. Uh, literally, it, the flame kicked on for maybe five seconds and then it went off. So, it just took a while for that to like turn on and go through its sequence, but now it is flat, it is red for low water. And hopefully after a delay, our auto feeder starts to fill the boiler at the proper level. Um, so we'll wait for that to hopefully happen, and then we can do a combustion analysis. I'm not sure if you can hear it, but the auto feeder is open. I'm just filling manually because it is uh, taking a while, and I'd like to fill it up quick enough. So once I see the uh, water level peak up, I'll close off the manual and let the auto finish it off. And I do see it coming up there. Close the manual and now it's finishing up with the auto and you can actually hopefully see our water is much clearer, at least in the side glass, but we'll make sure that fills to the proper level and then the boiler fires up and runs properly. And we're starting our combustion test with our combustion analyzer probably right about here on the inside of the center of the boiler, uh, right above that flame. Uh, I already did a draft test, and now I'm doing the combustion. And hopefully we get good readings. I did notice that it said they replaced the flame rollout in 58. No way this boiler's that old. Yeah, I guess it is. In 58, they replaced the rollout switch. That was a long time ago, so. Good thing there's draft now, because that would have been a long time of having the flame uh, roll out or negative draft or positive draft. But let this sit for a while and then print out our results. Okay, so our O2 needs to be lower. So what I'm going to do is take off this cap right here and adjust and give it a little bit more gas. Well, I would have liked to adjust it, but it didn't make any difference. So I guess the gas is at the max, but the most important thing is that there's no carbon monoxide, which there isn't, uh, but I would have liked to see O2 come down a little bit. Uh, you can see how good of a draft we had, negative 0.03. Uh, usually it's in like the thousandths place, but this is in the hundredths, which is good. But uh, we'll put a little printout on the boiler if there's not one already. Yeah, we'll put a little printout sheet where we could put this into, and I'll show you that. Okay, I just shut it down. If you were interested in seeing the boiler's readings, it's 150,000 BTUs, which seems a little big for this house, but it's an EG45. Here's the CP number, if anybody could figure out when this boiler was actually made. We know it was before 56, but it's still in uh, okay shape. No leaks. And 
pretty clean for the most part. So I'll show you that combustion anal analysis that we put it right there on the boiler. That way it's always there. We can always go back to it, uh, compare it. Um, and it proves that we, we left this system burning safely. So, yep, all finished up. And of course, there is construction, which closed a lane, and this guy had to stop right there to make his delivery. He couldn't pull up, let's see, uh, 30 feet and park somewhere else. That's great. Okay, so I just showed up to a no heating call. It is Thursday, the 28th of September, uh, so don't really need it yet, but show you what I'm dealing with. Here's the boiler. Uh, customer said he flipped that lever and water started leaking out of here. So we're gonna have to confirm what our boiler pressure really is because this says it's only 10. And uh, if it's actually at 10, then we'll replace that pressure relief valve. But pilot is lit and you can't really probably see it on camera with the light on, but the gas valve's also set to pilot, so. Let's see what happens when I set it to on. We get nothing. Okay. Oh. Nope, we just got something. It was just very slow to open. Um. Okay, so came on. Huh, was that it? The gas valve was in the off position. Huh. I would like to get this mounted up there properly, like that. Okay, let's see what's going on. If we got good draft. I don't feel any heat coming out of here, which is good actually feels like it is pulling, but I'll prove that with a combustion anal analyzer. Got a vent damper here. It's open. Is it wired in? I guess who knows, but yeah, let's, uh, I'll get a gauge, hook up to this boiler drain and see. Does this drain work? Yep. So I'll hook up to that drain, see what our pressure is reading. So I just let him know about everything. Uh, he did have gas work done in the house recently. I guess someone went to light the pilot and they never turned it back on. But I'm grabbing the Testo. Probably grab the bucket. And my pressure gauge. Just right here. That's what I use to confirm boiler pressure. Anytime there's any pressure issues, I use it. And it looks like I got black all over my face. But whatever. Okay, gauge is hooked up. 10 here. Let's see what we get. Nice, I'm getting 10. That's good. So that means our relief valve's bad. Uh, hopefully our pressure reducing valve is okay, but we gotta replace that relief valve and we gotta add a drip leg, so I'm gonna let the customer know. Okay, so, okay, so I tried, I tried, and I couldn't get it loosened off the elbow. So gonna have to replace the elbow and the nipple which is fine let's see if I could do it quick there we go just gonna line it up it's tricky to do one-handed the threads hmm Yep, that's it. So, didn't even have to drain the whole boiler down. So, get that tightened up. Uh, he says he has what he needs for drip legs, so we'll see if uh, that's true or not. But, there's a pressure relief valve. Okay, valve's on. Boiler's pressurized. Just making sure the pressure doesn't keep climbing uh, while it's cold, because then that would mean that this auto feeder's bad. But, uh, we have right at about 12 and a half PSI ish. Now I'm going to work on 
cleaning out these burners in this combustion chamber. I have power off to the boiler. I'm putting the gas valve to pilot so that say I hit the switch, it doesn't come on. Um, let's see. Oh yeah. Real dusty. And real dirty in there too. And where is that water coming from? Uh, could that be a result of this? It may be. Seems odd though. Uh, yeah, because it dripped down into here and now it's coming up under that way. It'll get these all cleaned up and cleaned out. Okay, so it's not perfect, but it's much, much cleaner. Um, it would have been nice to like really, really, really give it a deep cleaning, but there's that relief valve monitoring the boiler pressure. It hasn't been going up, so now it's uh, running and hopefully it doesn't go up as temperature increases. But this tank was replaced two years ago and oh, she's staining, it's dry right now, so. No leak currently. Uh, everything was really dusty. I vacuumed it off. I'm gonna give it a wipe down too. All the like, dust that you see on the surface, I'm gonna take care of that, but I wanna make sure that it's up and running first before I do the less necessary things. Um, he didn't have the materials for a drip leg and he doesn't wanna pay to have a drip leg put in, so. That is what it is. It's unfortunate, but I can't do anything about it. But get the test out. And we'll do combustion and draft analysis. And here's our results, which I unfortunately ran out of paper, but good negative draft, uh, good on our carbon monoxide, our oxygen, and our CO2. So 80% efficiency. I'll attach this to the boiler in a little packing slip that we don't seal the top on.